Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the equilibrium of solutions. This is AP Chemistry Unit 7, Section 11. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and consider doing that. That way you'll have access to all 100 plus of my AP Chemistry daily videos, as well as my AP review videos and problem walkthroughs and everything else. So hope uh, you can take advantage of that. Well, so far in this course, we've learned about equilibrium, as we're learning about here in Unit 7. We've learned about solutions as well. But in this video, we're going to take those two concepts and put them together, the equilibrium of solution chemistry. Now, so far, we have applied equilibrium to uh, gases and some other things, mostly gases. Well, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at solutions and how a saturated solution is also at equilibrium. Uh, f uh, just for example, if you have a saturated solution of sodium chloride, salt, and you just keep pouring the salt in there and eventually it, it's holding as much uh, sodium chloride as that solution can, can dissolve, well that saturated solution of sodium chloride is actually at equilibrium. Now, we're going to apply this to some things that we normally consider to be insoluble. You might remember those uh, solubility rules that we looked at earlier in this course back in Unit 4. And just as an example, lead chloride, lead 2 chloride, is generally insoluble, as you probably know. But the fact is that a very small amount of even that insoluble compound can dissolve in water. And we can use that amount to calculate an equilibrium constant for the dissolving of lead 2 chloride in water or for any other compound. Now, in order to do that, we have to first of all write a balanced equation that describes the dissolving of lead 2 chloride. And so the way that works is you write you know, the lead 2 chloride solid, and there's an equilibrium there, and it decomposes into lead 2 plus ions aqueous and two chloride ions aqueous. Now we know that lead 2 chloride is not that soluble so this equilibrium is going to lie pretty far to the left here and you aren't going to have a whole lot of uh, products and so you'd expect this equilibrium constant to be very small. Well we'll see how ju uh, just how small that is here in a moment. Now we can write the equilibrium constant expression for that process. It's the same way that we write an equilibrium constant expression for any reaction. It's products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficients. So Pb2 plus ions, its concentration, times the molarity of the chloride ions squared, since there's a coefficient of 2, and that's equal to the K. Now I want you to notice that we have a new type of equilibrium constant. This is not Kc or Kp. We call this Ksp. And the Sp in the Ksp stands for solubility product. So sometimes Ksp is just referred to as the solubility product constant. It's the same thing. It's just a fancy way of saying K or Ksp in this case. Now we're going to take that information here about lead to chloride and if we actually try to, to, to dissolve that into water, we find that at 25 degrees Celsius, a maximum of 4.51 grams of lead 2 chloride can be dissolved in one liter of solution. So let's calculate, first of all, the molar solubility of lead 2 chloride, and then from that we're going to calculate the K, or the Ksp here, for the lead 2 chloride. Now, Notice that the solubility that's given to us in the problem is in grams per liter. 4.51 grams of lead 2 chloride per 1.00 liters. Well, the question says calculate the molar solubility. All that means is just convert it to moles per liter. Regular solubility is grams per liter. Molar solubility is moles per liter. This is just a grams to moles conversion. That's all you have to do. So in our conversion factor, we're going to put grams on the bottom so it'll cancel out and one mole on top. And so at this point, you just have to consult the periodic table to find the molar mass of lead 2 chloride. You know, one lead atom and two chlorines. 
gets you a total of 278.1 grams per mole. And so you can divide uh, this out, you cancel grams, and you find that the molar solubility is 0.0162 moles per liter. That's the molar solubility of PBCL2. Now, we're going to take that information right here and move on to, to part B and calculate the KSP for PBCL2. Now, in order to do this, we need to think about the balanced equation. And we just said that the concentration of the lead 2 chloride that can dissolve in water is 0.0162 moles per liter. So if that's the case, then the, the concentration of lead that gets into solution is the same because it's a 1 to 1 ratio. It's, it's also 0.0162 moles per liter. The chloride ion concentration is going to be twice that value. Do you see why? It's a 1 to 2 ratio. So it's, it's twice. It's 0.0324 moles per liter. So now to find that equilibrium constant, that KSP that we're trying to solve for, we just have to plug those numbers into the appropriate spots in that little equation right there, in that expression. So we just plug it in, and when you key this into your calculator, 0.0162 times 0.0324 squared, you find that the KSP for this is 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. And so this is a fairly small number, just like we predicted it would be, since lead to chloride is, is not that soluble to start with. Let's try another example. The KSP for iron 2 sulfide is 8.0 times 10 to the negative 28th. Write the equation for the dissociation of iron 2 sulfide in water. Write the equilibrium constant expression for this process. Calculate the molar solubility of iron 2 sulfide in water. And calculate the solubility of iron 2 sulfide in grams per liter. So there's a lot going on here. So part A is just the equation. Of course, we have to know how to write the formula for iron 2 sulfide. That was way back in those introductory videos, unit 0. That's FES. And that's going to dissociate into Fe2 plus ions and sulfide S2 negative ions. Both of those ions are aqueous. Now part B, we're writing the equilibrium constant expression, uh, products over reactants, raise the power of the coefficients. Notice that we don't have anything in the denominator because solids are not involved in this equilibrium constant expression, just like it wasn't in the case of lead to chloride. So your KSP expression looks just like this. Well, let's go on to part C and calculate the molar solubility of iron 2 sulfide. Now, in the last example, we knew what that was, so we could write that down here next to the, in that case, it was PBCL2. We don't know what the molar solubility is, though. We're trying to calculate it. So since we don't know, let's just call it X. Now, if that is X, then the iron 2 plus ion concentration is also going to be X, isn't it? Because it's a 1 to 1 mole ratio. And the sulfide is also X, because it's a 1 to 1 mole ratio. So now we're going to plug what we know into KSP expression here to solve for the unknown. We're going to solve for X. The KSP is given to us in the problem. It's 8.0 times 10 to the negative 28. And we have those two X's to plug in for the iron ion concentration and the sulfide ion concentration. So basically we have the equation x squared equals 8.0 times 10 to the negative 28th. If we take the square root of both sides, we find that x equals about 2.83 times 10 to the negative 14th. And x, as you can see back here, is equal to the molar solubility. So that's the molar solubility. It's about 2.8 times 10 to the negative 14th moles per liter iron 2 sulfide. So that's part C. Now part D asks us to calculate the solubility. Now that's in grams per liter, isn't it? So all we have to do is take the, the molar solubility and convert it to grams per liter. So this is just a, a mole to gram conversion, just like we had earlier, isn't it? So 
That means that one mole has to go on the bottom, grams will go on top. We can look at the periodic table and find that the molar mass of FES adds up to about 87.91. If my calculations are correct, we can cancel moles, and now we just multiply across, and we find that the solubility of this will be about 2.5 times 10 to the negative 12th grams per liter. That is an exceedingly small amount, isn't it? So this is a very insoluble compound. Now, take a look at the KSP value. Very small number, 10 to the minus 28. That's an exceedingly small number, isn't it? So hopefully that helps us to see the significance of KSP. The larger the value for KSP, the more soluble that ionic compound is going to be. So we had lead to chloride earlier. It was like 10 to the minus fifth. You could, I mean, you could dissolve a, a certain amount of, of solid into that solution, and you could actually see that. But in the case of this last example, lead to sulfide, it's that, that that KSP is exceedingly small. So let's try two other examples. Which of these two compounds is more soluble? Well, it's the one that has the larger KSP, isn't it? So that would be the barium sulfate in this case. Its KSP is much larger by a factor of uh, 10 to the seventh, basically, uh, than zinc sulfide. Let's do one more example together. As, and here is our reasoning, of course, more soluble because it's value for KSP is larger. Let's do one more example. The KSP for magnesium fluoride is 5.16 times 10 to the negative 11th. Write the equation for the, the dissociation of magnesium fluoride in water. Write the equilibrium constant expression for this process. Calculate the molar solubility of magnesium fluoride in water. And calculate the solubility of this compound in grams per liter. Once again, just like in the last example, we start with the, the formula for magnesium fluoride. Magnesium is a plus two, fluoride is a minus one, so that's MgF2, solid. And that's going to dissociate into magnesium two plus ions and two fluoride ions, F negative. Don't forget to balance these. If you leave off the two, it's not correct, is it? And that's gonna throw off your, your equilibrium calculation. Now, part B, equilibrium constant expression, we're going to leave out that solid, just like we always do for solids. And so KSP equals the magnesium ion concentration times the fluoride concentration squared. So that's your KSP. Let's do part C and calculate the molar solubility of magnesium fluoride. Once again, we don't know what that is, so let's call it X. And the magnesium ion concentration is also going to be X because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. The fluoride ion concentration is going to be 2X, isn't it? Because it's a one-to-two ratio by looking at the balanced equation. Well, now we can take these variables and plug those into the KSP expression. The KSP is 5.16 times 10 to the negative 11th, right out of the problem. Magnesium is x, fluoride is 2x, and that has to be squared. So 2x quantity squared times x is 4x cubed. So we can divide both sides by 4, and we get that x cubed equals 1.29 times 10 to the negative 11th. And then we can take the cube root and find that x equals 2.35 times 10 to the negative fourth. And back in our equation, we see that x is equal to the molar solubility of this compound, isn't it? So our molar solubility of magnesium fluoride is about 2.35 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter. So that's the answer to part C. Now part D, let's calculate this in grams per liter. So all we have to do is take that 2.35 times 10 to the minus fourth moles per liter of magnesium fluoride. And let's convert this to grams per liter. This is just a simple mole to gram conversion. So in our conversion factor, one mole goes on the bottom, so it'll cancel, and grams on top. And by looking at the periodic table, uh, magnesium and then two fluorides, 
add up to about 62.30 grams in a mole. So when you cancel moles, you can multiply across, and you'll find that the solubility in grams per liter is 0 0.0146 grams per liter. So once again, a fairly small number, but not nearly as small as we had in the last example. And that makes sense looking at the size of that KSP. I hope you've enjoyed this video and have learned something from it. Hope you've learned how to calculate uh, KSP and molar solubility and solubilities in this video. If you have, consider giving me a thumbs up. That really does help the algorithm and leave a comment down below if you'd like to do so. I'm Jeremy Krug. In our next video, we're going to look at some more advanced examples of KSP.